I got interested in this because as a reporter for Time Magazine, I covered 9-11 from New York City where I lived at the time. And then I covered uh, the DC sniper down here, and then I covered Hurricanes Katrina and Rita in New Orleans, and other crimes and misdemeanors in between. And one of the things that I noticed was that the most fascinating things were being told to me by regular people who had survived these disasters, and yet none of the things that they told me were being talked about when I had to go to one of those, you know, godforsaken homeland security conferences or something, uh, or committee hearings, or any of those things that I have to do for my job. All we talked about of those things were, you know, gear. We talked about interoperable radios. If I never have to hear about interoperable radios again, that would be okay. Um, we talk about hazmat suits. All of these things are very important, okay? I don't mean to diminish that, but I just, I just was totally mystified by the stories that survivors were telling me because it turns out, and you know, that in most really big disasters, the first responders and the gear are not there. They can't be there. They can't be everywhere at once. So regular people do the vast majority of life saving in big disasters. And these people were telling me that they were totally stunned by what it felt like physiologically, psychologically, even socially, to actually go through a disaster. That nothing was what they had expected. It wasn't all bad. It just wasn't what they expected. And that there were lots of mysteries that to this day they couldn't figure out. So I got more and more intrigued by this. Some might say obsessed. And I, thank, thanks to the goodwill of, of Time Warner, uh, was able to take a year of unpaid leave and just indulge this obsession. And I traveled around the world talking to, talking to survivors of ferry disasters, of plane crashes, fires, terrorist attacks, and also talking, then taking what they told me and bringing it to people who understand the brain. And I mean that in the broadest sense of the term. So neuroscientists, but also trauma psychologists, and also people who train firefighters, people who study submarine disasters, people who study how to evacuate a skyscraper. All of these people know part of this equation, but they very rarely talk to each other. And so I was able to take the mysteries that the survivors had brought to me and help understand them so that we could learn from them, from these other people. And it was endlessly fascinating um, for me. So, so what I want to do today is talk to you a little bit about that by talking about the three phases that most people seem to go through in most catastrophes. And I'll go through them in chronological order uh, so that we can get some sense of what the brain is doing in times like these. 